very striking when you sit as close as this to see how similar they are to human beings. Lady loves DIY. But the most important thing we share is our big brain. It's that that has produced so many of the talents and abilities that we have in common. All right guys, I thought I'd just do a quick video here of showing you kind of the plan. I need to go ahead and make a, a place for this so that I have a place to build it back up once I start taking it apart. Kind of started taking a few pieces apart, as you can probably see. I was just getting a little bit too cramped on this bench, which is only about three and a half feet long, uh, not including the metal part, which is actually a welding bench. But this bench is dirty, and I need to, I need to do the dirty work here. So I thought I'd move it over, go ahead and move it over into its new home. And I'll probably push it a little bit farther that direction. But uh, you see there's a lot of space back there. The motor takes up a lot of space behind this thing. I'll have a back, some sort of backsplash, some sort of pan. Probably gonna paint this black. This is a doubled up three quarter plywood. And the top layer is like a birch plywood that I salvaged from somewhere. And then the underneath is just regular plywood. Uh, I'm not a carpenter. Never would claim to be. This is not a woodworking channel. But that's a strong bench. It's not going anywhere. And it's pretty much level. When I was younger, I liked messing with dead trees. But uh, I, I don't so much anymore. I, I prefer metal. I'm not sh exactly sure why. But wood just sort of, I'm just... It's sort of just a means to an end anymore. I'm not really looking to make anything uh, super fancy. I mean, what's the point, really? right? What's the point? Make it functional and that's it. Um, I think I'm gonna make a backsplash out of stainless steel. I thought I'd also salvage from somewhere else. The motor takes up basically that whole space behind the lathe, so this whole area will be filled up. This should be backsplash of some sort. Uh, drip pan, I'll have shelving over here so the actual bench is actually a little bit high from what a lot of them I've seen are and I did that on purpose because I have a dodgy back and I learned from the combo machine that uh, if you have to bend over at all if you have to kind of crouch a little bit to use the controls it's really bad on your back or bad on my back so height of the bench is about 38 and a quarter the chuck height is approximately 15 and a half inches. The compound is about 45 inches, or the cross slide is about 45 inches. So essentially, I don't think I'll have to actually bend over at all. I'm very close to the action here. So uh, I think I'm going to like that. Like I say, it's a little higher than what I've seen other ones, but. Um, I think higher is probably better in this case. Let's see the level here. So level-wise, not too shabby. Of course, this isn't the most accurate level. It's a 
just for carpentry work but I think that's a good place to start and then we can shim shim up it's a little leaning back just a little bit that's all right it's about the same there Overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I think I probably went a little bit wide, but I think the height is going to work out nice. I'm really uh, digging that. That's going to be that's going to be nice on my back. Uh, as far as cleaning, I've haven't done much more than what I showed in the pictures because I got started on the bench. I, I realized very quickly that I needed more space in the shop to uh, spread out a little bit and clean parts and uh, so that necessitated the complete shop reorganization before I started cleaning on the lathe. The chuck is very much stuck on there. I've tried a couple different ways to get it off and it is not moving so I think I'm going to do left hand threaded rod to thread through and use it as a as a counter to the rotation. Uh, I was watching Mr. Pete's video and that's one of the one of the recommendations he had although he said he's never really had one that's that stuck on there but this thing's pretty stuck on there. If anybody has any other suggestions um, obviously I'm not going to use the back gears to do it or something stupid like that but I do need something to hold the spindle pretty tightly. Uh, I do have a strap clamp. I haven't tried that yet. I could take the gears off of here and hold this end with a strap clamp. Obviously got a lot to do here. It's not just purchasing a lathe. It's complete reorganization of the shop. So uh, I do plan to put some shelving underneath and probably some drawers. I have some tracks to do that with. I'll probably make some just some slide out, simple slide out drawers. This bench is all braced to the wall. And actually it's braced in the corner as well. I'm hoping that I'm going to get less shake than I do with the combo machine. You can't tell the shake when you're using the machine, but you can see it in the camera. So, and that's just a function of being on a wood framed in a wood framed shop. You know, it's just there's it's not a concrete floor, so you know the, the everything has a little bit of flex to it. It's been quite a bit. You know, there originally this space this space had the uh, some shelving in the corner. It had this unit and over that was the sandblasting unit. All the shelving's been dismantled. The sandblaster's now in the other room. My big red craftsman toolbox was here. It is now in that corner, which is near the door, which is actually a, probably a better place for it. So I don't have to come all the way into the shop to get to the toolbox because a lot of the stuff I do is uh, outside as far as those sorts of tools. Storage boxes I've hung on the wall. They were sitting on that bench that was right here. That bench extended all the way to the wall. The toolbox is, has been wedged in there. That was that was fun because it was full. Uh, I was too lazy to take the drawers out because I got it out of I got it out of this spot very easily and then moved it down the aisle very easily. But then I realized that it doesn't have swiveling casters on all four wheels. So I had to kind of get a toe jack out and kind of wedge it back into that corner. But it worked out pretty well. Drill is going to stay where it is. I've decided the Milwaukee bandsaw is probably going to move over to this shelf, which you can't see, but there is a shelf right there. The little sander uh, I use quite a bit, so I'm probably going to keep it here as well. Um, it will be the only grit in this shop. So anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed that. It's a little bit of an empire of dirt right now, but uh, it's mine, so that's all that's important, you know. You always want to do better, but you also have to be grateful for what you have. So anyways guys, I will see you next time, and uh, I appreciate you watching. Thanks.